G'day, g'day, g'day. Oops. G'day, 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 g'day. G'day ladies and germs, Connor here from C-Dubs Media, back with another video. And today we're doing my full review of the Canon R50. And this is my review as like a street photographer, a YouTuber, and like a part-time content creator where I actually do charge money for it. So a bit of all levels here. Yeah, probably just not your pro-pro level. Although I'd like to think I am. But the Canon R50, I'm actually filming on it now. This is 1080p, 25 frames per second, f4.5, ISO 400. So it's the kit lens and the body. I like it. I think it looks pretty good. This is a very flat profile. This is how I like to film. And it comes out and then I edit it and put in my own sort of saturation and contrast and that sort of thing. And this is what I end up with, which I think looks pretty nice. I mean, it's not like the background blur of f1.8, but for f4.5 on a crop sensor camera, I like it. But I started off my review with this camera doing street photography. For me, that's where why I got this. I've got a Canon R6, which is amazing for photography. It's absolutely incredible how much better it is to use than the Canon R50. But I wanted something small. For street photography, I don't want to carry around 15 kilo worth of gear. When I do street photography, I just want to be camera here, ready to go, clickety-click all day long. And I think another key spec for me is the weight. With the kit lens, I think it's about 380 grams with added. So that's why I got the R50. And I did see in other reviews that it was labeled the entry level camera. And I don't know if there's such a thing for street photography. I mean, I've seen some amazing gear from people shooting on cameras from 40, 50 years ago, just doing film photography. And those photos look incredible. So I don't think this is the right genre. Street photography is the right genre to label a, a beginner or entry level camera. Yes, it's cheap, but it's got some good specs. I mean, it shoots in 4K 25 frames per second or 4K 30, it shoots in 1080p 60, does uh, 100 frames per second slow motion. It's got this amazing Canon autofocus, which everyone raves about, and as you can see, is holding up just fine with me. If I walk back and walk in, and the autofocus is doing just fine. So you don't really have to worry about autofocus on any modern Canon camera. It has 650 autofocus points, which is plenty. Now, for me doing this street photography, I was actually autofocus off because when you're trying to focus on one person, but it's focusing and there's 20 people in the shot, then it's pretty slim odds you're going to get the focus on the right person. So I was doing that zone autofocus where I was putting it on f7.1 and setting my focus for about two meters in front of me and then that would give me some good focus depth as well to get a little bit off with some of my shots and still get people in focus.
Now your base ISO is 100 to 32,000. It can expand to 51,000. I wouldn't really go that high, but you can push it if you really need to take that shot. Uh, for video, it goes to 12,000 something or other. Now the electronic shutter does go up to 1 8 thousandths of a second. Uh, I didn't really have it up that high very often. Uh, what I liked about this was how many frames per second it can shoot. So it can do up to 15 frames per second. That's just in JPEGs, not in RAW. In RAW, I was getting about six frames per second. And then it was like it was actually purposefully handicapped. It was like it got to six really fine and then it just dropped off like it was being, you know, something to do with the software just saying we're not going to allow it. I think it could do a lot more, but they don't let it because they're trying to protect their higher end. But I get that. And it's fine here. If you want 15 frames per second, whack it in the JPEG, change a couple of other settings, and you're going to get 15 frames per second. Now, it does also have a 30-minute recording limit, which so that's not too much of an issue here. Again, it is a, a what they you know they say low end or beginner camera, so we've got to look at those specs, and the price will determine that. Now, I did use this camera with one of the expensive lenses as well. Uh, the 15 to 35, which still gives me a quite a wide field of view, and uh, the images looked even better. So, uh, you know, you don't have to get a high end lens, you could get a low end, and that's fine. Like, this is the cheapest lens you're going to get that's on here right now, seems to be doing fine for me. And all this photography you're seeing on camera was from this lens. Now, there is no weather sealing here, so that is something to consider. I was caught out at one point during the day with heavy downpour and even a bit of hail and I just ran for the covers and got on the cover because I didn't want to wreck this camera and it's got no weather sealing whatsoever. So I think for me the main pros of this are the size, the fact that it shoots 4K video, it's a great little vlogging camera, you can really just run and gun with this. If you're a YouTuber or a home content creator, this camera is awesome for you. It also films in uh, vertical mode, so for you TikTokers and all that sort of shit, it's going to be fine for you as well. The 24 megapixels gives you a lot of resolution, the ability to crop in on your photos or blow them up into a nice size if you did choose to print them or display them on a bigger screen, they're still going to look amazing. You can shoot in slow motion as well, which is 120 frames per second, or 100 for me because I shoot in PAL, so you got some good options there. There's no crop in 4K. I mean, this is 1080p, 25 frames per second, and I'm just going to quickly change to 4K. Okay, and now we are shooting in 4K, 25 frames per second. So as you can see, there was no change in the actual frame. Everything is as it was. The only difference is you have more resolution. You can see more of the beautiful features of my face. You can just see everything in more detail which I don't like when I'm filming my face. So let's go back to 1080p. And here we are back in 1080p. So as you can see, no crop. Now it does also have an audio jack on the side, 3.5 mil, so you can plug in your little Rode microphones if you want to. Right now I'm filming on a different microphone. I imagine you want to hear what it's like directly into camera. So let's do that now for you. Okay, so now we're actually filming with the Rode Micro plugged into the Canon. R50, which is a great little setup for vlogging. Links down below if you want to pick up one of those Rode microphones. So this is the audio directly into the camera. And this is the audio recorded externally. Can you tell the difference between the onboard mic and camera and the $1,000 audio which has been used to record now? We also have HDMI out and you can charge via USB. Now I did learn this the hard way, but charging via USB is a problem but i'll get to soon so stick around because it's important now another pro for this camera is that it does have the ability to change the buttons and the button layout and you can have custom functions not custom shooting modes but custom functions so i've got lots of little shortcuts set up on the back of the camera to enable me to be able to shoot fast, save my battery life, and just change my settings on the go. Here's a link now to a video where I explain the top 10 settings to change straight away. And this video for me that I'm linking to is how I shoot. It's how I have it set up for run and gun. This is what works for me. 
Another pro for me is that it's really just that Canon software. Amazing to use, easy. I hate saying this about any company, but they have got the best software. It just sort of flows. It's easy to read. It's just it's not like uh, you're struggling to comprehend where everything is. It's pretty much just follow the bouncy ball down the street. That's how I like to describe the settings. Now, areas I would like to see improved, and this is a bit of a short list because I do factor in the price point and where this sits. And if you want more, you have to spend more. But a couple of things I would like. The battery life, it is shit. Like I was out for a whole day, I got 210 photos and about maybe 10 minutes of video once all put together, so not a lot. And I'd actually ordered another battery from JB Hi-Fi, those motherfuckers, paid for extra delivery so it'd get there within 24 hours and it got here in six days. So that pissed me off, but I had what I had. And then I took with me a portable charger because it does charge via USB type C and the portable charger wouldn't charge it. It charged everything else that I own, just not the camera. So there's an issue there. I don't know why they're restricting it in that way. It does charge via USB type C when you plug it into a wall socket, but just not through a battery charger or a portable battery. So kind of sucked. So when it ran out, it ran out and you know, after a whole day of shooting, you know when it ran out, right at sunset. So I'd like to see that improved. Maybe the next model they could figure something out because 210 shots is pretty shit. Well, you know what they could do? They could even throw in an extra battery. Another area I'd like to see is uh, a bit more stabilization. We do have digital IS, but it's not really that good. Yes, some of the lenses have it, but then you're starting to bust out more cash. So it would be nice to see a bit better stay inside the camera. Um, now, I was doing some um, slow shutter shots and slow shutter photography when I was using this, and they worked out fine, but it gets down to a point where you know you, you just can't keep using it. So stabilization would help that, and it would help the video. Now, as with all Canon cameras, it comes with the flippy screen, which is great. It works really amazing. They're the best at it. I don't know why still companies don't put in a flippy screen like what was that one I seen t today the Z8 what the fuck is that shit man like why why don't they learn from that like Nikon just put a flippy screen on just copy Sony copy fucking Canon and put a flippy screen on but anyway this is not a Nikon review this is the Canon R50 review and it's got a flippy screen it's great I know I mentioned the, the dual pixel autofocus, but it also can track people, animals, and vehicles. Uh, so it doesn't have everything from the high end. They can do a couple other things, but it can do enough. It shoots in IPB light and IPB. It doesn't shoot in anything else, so there's no raw recording here at all. But you don't really want to. This is the sort of camera where you just want to take small videos, take photos, connect it to your phone, and share it on social media. And for that, it does amazingly so. I did some landscapes with it and some portraits with it and I was really happy with both. I mean, for landscapes, you really just need a tripod to be able to get some good photos and for portraits, you just really need shallow depth of field. So, for the portraits, I highly recommend the Canon RF Nifty 50. F1.8, it's gonna blur out the background nicely and it's gonna make your images just pop especially for those portraits. So I definitely recommend getting one of these. They're quite cheap. Links down below. Everything you've seen today has been shot by me on the Canon R50. Where this video now is on the R50. All the B-roll you're seeing is on the R50 and all the photos are taken on the R50. Do I recommend this camera? Definitely, without a doubt. If this is your budget, if this is what you wanna do, go and get it. I've also seen people who have some high-end cameras that they use for video and stuff like that run out and pick up the little Canon R50 for street photography specifically, and I highly recommend it for that as well. That's why I got it. Anyway, I've talked enough shit. Go and get the camera, go and do some photography, shoot some video, enjoy it. It doesn't really matter what you're shooting with. The cat. Wait, idiot. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Check out.